Racaniello, and this is Virus Watch, the weekly video report on what's happening in the amazing world of viruses. At least 15 companies are working on developing vaccines against Zika virus. The main reason for this interest in vaccines, of course, is that the virus can cause birth defects. The risk, according to the CDC, is between 1 and 13 percent of infections. The first paper describing a candidate Zika virus vaccine has been published in the journal Nature. Let's take a look at how this vaccine was made. There are four basic approaches to making viral vaccines. Inactivated virus vaccines are produced by treating infectious viruses with a chemical that destroys infectivity but maintains the ability of the virus to induce a protective immune response. The inactivated polio virus vaccine or the Salk vaccine, influenza virus, hepatitis A, and rabies virus vaccines are all examples of this type of vaccine. Attenuated vaccines can infect the host, but they don't cause disease. Examples include the well-known oral polio virus vaccine, the Sabin vaccine, measles virus vaccine, and the influenza virus vaccine that's given as a nasal spray. A third type of vaccine is produced by taking infectious virus, disrupting it into its components, and then purifying one or more of the proteins for injection. All three of these approaches are really old technology. Although they still work well, they were developed many years ago. New vaccine development approaches are now coming to the market. These new technologies all depend on what we call recombinant DNA technology, the ability to clone genes. In one example, a gene encoding a viral protein is cloned into a vector, and then it's expressed in bacteria, in yeast, or insect cells. The proteins that are made can be purified and then injected as a vaccine. Often, these proteins assemble into non-infectious virus-like particles, as is the case for the vaccines for hepatitis B virus and human papillomaviruses. We've also experimented with using other viruses as vectors for vaccines. An example is an experimental Ebola virus vaccine, which consists of a virus that doesn't cause disease in humans, and that would be vesicular stomatitis virus, which has been engineered to produce the Ebola virus glycoprotein. This vaccine showed promise in early tests during the West African Ebola virus outbreak. One of the candidate Zika virus vaccines is different from all of these because it consists of naked DNA. It's called a DNA vaccine. This type of vaccine consists simply of the vector that encodes the viral gene that can be expressed in cells of the animal that's going to be immunized. In the simplest case, the vector encodes only the viral protein. The vector DNA, usually produced in bacteria, can be prepared free of contaminating protein and has no capacity to replicate in the vaccinated host. But it can be the template for expression of the desired protein. DNA vaccines can be inoculated into the muscle or into the skin. Either way that you do it, the goal is to ensure that the plasma DNA is engulfed by a macrophage or a dendritic cell so that the epitopes of the newly made protein of the virus are presented on the cell surface to the immune system. A striking property of DNA vaccination is that a pretty low dose of DNA appears to be enough to induce long-lasting immune responses. And in addition, the cost of this approach is a fraction of that required to generate a protein-based or an inactivated or attenuated vaccine. The stability of DNA and its ability to withstand drying make this strategy particularly attractive for vaccine delivery in resource-poor areas where refrigeration is limited or unreliable. An intramuscular DNA vaccine to prevent West Nile virus infection of horses has been approved, and there are leads for HIV and hepatitis C virus DNA vaccines, but so far there are yet no approved human DNA vaccines. 
There's one journal article on a Zika virus vaccine, and it's a DNA vaccine. In this paper, DNA vectors encoding two viral proteins called PRM and E protein, these were prepared from a Brazilian Zika virus strain. Remember, virus watch on building Zika virus, that PRM and E proteins are embedded in the viral membrane. Mice were then inoculated intramuscularly with a single dose of the vector encoding PRME. Three weeks later, the mice were found to have antibodies to the E protein, which could block infection in cell culture. Immunized mice were then inoculated intravenously with 100 platforming units of Zika virus, either a Brazilian or a Puerto Rican isolate. No virus in the blood was detected in immunized animals that had received the DNA. In contrast, animals that were not inoculated or who received DNA vector alone developed high levels of Zika virus in the blood. In other experiments, the authors purified antibodies from the blood of immunized mice and showed that these antibodies, when injected into other mice, could prevent Zika virus infection. In contrast, depletion of T lymphocytes from immunized mice did not affect protection from infection. Therefore, antibodies and not T cells are essential for protecting mice from Zika virus infection. These results are encouraging because they show that a single dose of a DNA vaccine can protect mice from Zika virus infection. Now, we don't know if the same vaccine will protect humans, but studies to answer this question are certainly planned. Several other groups are also developing DNA Zika virus vaccines, and one has been approved by the FDA for safety testing in humans. If the DNA vaccines prove safe in these phase one trials, they could be used in efficacy tests to see if they prevent human infections as early as 2017. And don't forget that other kinds of Zika virus vaccines are also being developed, perhaps more than has ever been done so quickly for any other virus. It's really a remarkable time. That's Virus Watch for July 22nd, 2016. For more in-depth discussion about viruses, check out our science show This Week in Virology at microbe.tv slash twiv. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.